Welcome to our PBA channel. My name is Karolina Nadolska and I'm going to talk to you or with you about uh, changing of seasons. Right now we are entering February and uh, I've noticed over this weekend that all the squirrels and birds and everyone in the park is playing and getting ready for spring. So how do we humans prepare ourselves for spring? Well, uh, one of the uh, wisdoms that uh, Ayurveda shares with us is called the uh, adaptogens. Adaptogens are very special herbs, very powerful herbs, and that help us adapt to changing environment. So uh, probably the, the spring will be coming in 30-40 uh, days and we are getting ready for that big, big event. So um, uh, adaptogens uh, are very popular, very popular right now um, because of the uh, changing climate, because of the uh, heating of our planet. And there were many studies uh, over the, the last two or three summers made of, with humans uh, who tested uh, if adaptogens will help us cope with uh, heating up of the climate and uh, they did prove that uh, we cope better with heat if we take everyday adaptogens during the summer. So it's the same uh, in winter uh, and in the transitional period. Maybe transitional period is just uh, one of the regular characteristics of changing weather uh, in our planet, but it also puts a little bit of stress on our bodies. Uh, we are coming from short, cold days to a more sunny day and warmer days. Uh, our body wants to detox from all the uh, fat that we accumulated and extra kilograms. So we also want to increase our metabolism, right? And uh, uh, what uh, if we talk about adaptogens, uh, those uh, since they are very powerful herbs, uh, it, if you have any pre-existing conditions, it would be good to first consult with an Ayurvedic practitioner or tradi Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine or uh, um, naturopath. Uh, before taking them, uh, otherwise uh, you should always be cautious and get the best quality and uh, preferably organic herbs. So uh, from the, the long list of the uh, adaptogens in Ayurveda, we have of course our favorite ashwagandha. Uh, we have amalaki, this is an incredible herb. This is one, one of the uh, ingredients in Trifala. Uh, we have Bala. Bala is an herb that uh, in Sanskrit and in Hindi stands for strength. So you can imagine. Uh, we, we also have ginseng. Uh, we have a woman with 100 uh, husbands, Shatavari. We do have uh, Tulsi. This is an herb that we talked a lot about uh, during winter when our lungs were uh, congested. Tulsi help us breathe and decongest. And so out of all of these herbs, um, I want to focus today on the uh, ginseng category. Uh, ginseng is also called in Latin uh, with uh, as a the Latin name for ginseng is panax. Panax from the, the Latin word panaceum, uh, because it cures all and because of for in the Chinese uh, beliefs and Korean, um, the, the ginseng is a magical herb that can help and strengthen and go, help us go through many different uh, diseases and challenges. But, uh, if you go through uh, and Google ginseng, there are so many different categories of ginseng. There are at least 20 or if not 30. And some of them have the Latin name uh, Panax. Those are the, the true ginseng according to the biological uh, categorization. Some of them have different uh, Latin names, yet all of them are colloquially called ginseng. 
Uh, so uh, I tried on myself and my family a couple of uh, ginseng and I wanted to tell you and recommend which one is best for you. So we have the, uh, the traditional, the, the gin, Korean or Chinese ginseng. This is a very strong, very potent herb that uh, increases our metabolism, that pre prepares us for uh, what's ahead. It's very often used by, uh, by athletes who are preparing uh, for marathon or triathlon. So this uh, category is good for, to take for 30 days, no more. And uh, if you have any pre-existing conditions, watch out. Then there is the, uh, the, another category called Siberian ginseng. Uh, Siberian ginseng, it's a little bit cooler and it's uh, specifically designed by nature to uh, strengthen our immune system, to increase our endurance. And uh, this one, uh, the, uh, the Siberian ginseng, we can take for longer, for extended period of time. And it's perfect for this season, for the pre-spring season, when our body is detoxing, increasing metabolism, getting rid of extra fat. And then there is, of course, uh, Ayurvedic uh, favorite, the Indian ginseng. This is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is a distant cousin of the Korean ginseng, but it's also extremely potent and it's definitely an adaptogen. So it definitely helps us adapt to the changing environment, uh, either outside or within uh, our psyche. So uh, ashwagandha is very often used to balance if we have excess of the vata, of the air element. Uh, so basically, if we have increased anxiety, if we are nervous, uh, it helps us calm down. But what is also interesting, then if we have excess of earth element and we are heavy, depressed, we don't have energy, then ashwagandha is also very good for us. So it's good for both the air, excess of the air element and of the earth element. And ashwagandha is very nicely taken at night uh, with, uh, with glass of milk, either animal or uh, plant-based milk. And uh, I uh, rest uh, the last couple of weeks, I've been taking a tincture. This is the Siberian ginseng. And I really like um, uh, taking ginseng in either a tincture or powder form. It's more potent, it's easier for you to absorb. And uh, so this is, this is a very, very important category of, of adaptogens, ginseng. And uh, to go extremely well with ginseng is my favorite shilajit, also called in Latin asphaltum punjabinum, because uh, I, like, uh, I like my shilajit to come from Himalayas, but can also come from different mountains in the Asian region or in North or South America. Uh, the, one, of the, uh, one of the prabhav, the unique nature of shilajit, is that it can cure any disease. So it basically, if you take it with herbs that are directed uh, exactly to help uh, cope with the challenges of the chronic disease, it, the, uh, the shilajit strengthens that. So if you take it with ginseng, it strengthens the quality of ginseng. For instance, the Siberian ginseng, which is very good to increase your immuno barrier and decrease inflammation. Uh, so when we talk about uh, shilajit, it's wonderful for diabetes, it's, uh, di it's wonderful for anemia, it uh, strengthens you, it decreases cholesterol, it decreases uh, uh, average sugar level. But very often the devil is in the details, right? So shilajit uh, to work, it needs to be high quality. And to be high quality, it also needs to be purified. Uh, the, the wonderful uh, shilajit that I get from India is uh, purified with uh, trifala, bringraj, and then yet purified again with milk and served with milk. 
So uh, if you take a pill of, uh, of shilajit, usually you get 5 to 10% of this uh, magical mixture and the rest is just the, the supplements. And uh, So um, if you have a, a, a possibility, uh, this is purified version of shilajit that I take. And uh, if you have possibility, try it too. Uh, between one and two grams, that's how you start. You cannot really overdose it because uh, uh, according to Charaka, you can take it all the way up to 10 to 12 grams a day, which may be a little bit heavy on you. And uh, just dissolve it with hot milk and drink it at night. So, um, uh, when again, when we talk about uh, coping with changes in seasons, the, the particularly the uh, pre-spring season, it's wonderful to be prepared and to start working on the cleansing um, of our bodies. And uh, this is not really a time to do the liver or the lymphatic cleanse. That's most uh, that you have to probably wait one more month for end of March, beginning of April. But this is a wonderful time to start with adaptogens such as ginseng and such as shilajit. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, short presentation. Uh, please subscribe to our weekly channel and send us questions. The more questions we have, the better we can answer. All the best and stay healthy and strong in this wonderful, wonderful coming season. Take care. Bye. Namaste.